Welcome to the Sunday Million Highlight Show. This edition from the 31st of May 2015, 5,754 runners making up that big 1.15 million dollar prize pool. We're back in the Sunday Million groove after our adventures in Scoop. And these are the nine players that would make the final table. Lazarom from Sweden started off as the short stack, but would quickly move up and would also, unfortunately, quickly lose Palmito 9 from Switzerland. He'd take home $8,976 for ninth. Your chip leader right now is GX91, who's uh, built on that chip lead over the first few hands of the final table. Eagle-eyed viewers, does that include you, or are you dozing through this? Come on, pay attention. There will be a test. Have spoilers spotted Lekenden at the final table. Very well-known MTT player online. $4 million lifetime in winnings, including winning the Super Tuesday earlier this year. I've got a note here that he's won 122 online tournaments. That's a tremendous amount of wins. Where does he put all the trophies, do you think? He's probably got a whole separate room in his house for them. Probably. He's all in right now. Doesn't matter how many tournaments you've won. It's still very hard to get eights to beat tens. Let's see if he can do it. Rocky Donkey is going to try and deprive him of the pot. And probably the other players wouldn't be too sorry to see the Kendon hit the rail here. Nothing personal. But the best player at the final table going out is always a good thing. Only an eight then on this river. Can turn it round for Lekendon. And it's a brief visit to the final table for the MTT superstar. He banks $14,000 to add to his $55 gajillion lifetime. Here's what he won't be winning. The payout structure. Uh, the winner today will take home $178,000 and change. The runner-up will do pretty well as well. The thing you'll have probably noticed there is, as ever, the money jumps at this final table are big. The players you're watching have battled through thousands of players to be here. They're probably a little bit tired, a little bit excited, and making decisions for huge amounts of money. It's not easy. Let's see how they do. Lazarom will raise here with King-Queen. Was the short stack at the start of the final table? Not so much anymore. There are a few stacks, short stacks around, aren't there? So we're going we're to see some action. We're going to see some showdown pots, I think. Not here, though. Ryuk deciding to call the raise with not much room for manoeuvre. <laughs> That's a ridiculous cooler, isn't it? How does that happen when reasonably short stacked at the final table? Nasty stuff for Ryuk. He will think the exact opposite, of course. He'll think this is... An adventure in Wonderland. All you can see right now is chirping birds and cherry blossom and chips coming his way. It's not going to happen. I, I, I'll i be the one to let him down. I'm good at that. <laughs> Letting people down. <laughs> says it on my business card, actually. Commentator, preppy, lets people down semi-professionally. They're getting the money in here. They're just doing a little dance around the, the issue. Ryuk puts the money in, Lazaron puts the money in, and Ryuk's going to get the horrible news that he's in terrible trouble here, having thought this was his opportunity to double up. Fool's flop it was for him. Needs to make a full house on the river to win or split this, and it's not going to happen for him. Acer Clubs locks it up for Lazaron. He knocks out Ryuk in a very unlucky hand. Ryuk from Mexico does have the consolation of this being his biggest cash to date, $25,000 not to be sniffed at. Interesting final table, actually. Many of these players will be scoring their biggest ever tournament result. That's the magic of the Sunday Million. Satellites running around the clock. You can get in for next to no money and end up playing for huge money. These six players have got $36,000 plus locked up. And remember, we're playing for $178,000 for first. So a serious return on investment, I think it's fair to say. Lazarom's made a three bet here with ace-queen. We can see through the magic of seeing the whole card, it's so much easier to play like this. That Thief83 uh, has the whip hand here with the Ace-King and around about 10 big blinds. Thief83 already bettered his previous best in the Sunday Millions, got a 56th place finish last year. This is going a lot better and he will be thinking about even bigger returns right now when he gets the news that he's got his money in very good here. He is the all-in player, Thief 83 needs this ace-king to hold, and it won't. What a flop. Well, he might have seen the king 
first, but then the horrible news that his opponents flopped the nut flush. And that is a poker frying pan right in the face for Thief 83. That's literally how it feels when that happens. Our second player out in coolerish fashion. In sixth spot, what a brutal game this No Limit Hold Them can be. Thief 83 from Cyprus finishes sixth. $36,800 and a brutal, brutal way to go out. 200,000, 400,000 are your blinds right now. We're still on our stack consolidation project. We're going to get some play later on. You can see that from the way the stacks have gone, but a couple of short stacks still left. A, Angel. Just wanted to be the first Angel in the phone book, didn't he? People are looking for an Angel, and they're, they're looking to call one up for a bit of help. I want to be the first name they see, so I'm going with A, Angel. How annoyed was he when AA Angel got his listing a couple of years ago? Very is the answer. He's all in here. GX91 has called him. And uh, Angel's in trouble. Needs a miracle. It's not going to happen. Miracles don't happen. It's a brutal, brutal world. GX91 has knocked out an Angel. And uh, A Angel 10 from Chile takes home $48,000 for fifth. And leaves us four-handed in the million. How quick is this? I'll be done in time for tea. Tremendous. I think we will see a little bit of poker, though. The way the stacks have gone. As you can see, Rocky Donkey on the button here has got 30 plus, 31 and a half big blinds. GX91 sitting pretty. Every time you see this, you've got to think, how much fun would that be? Sitting with 60, 70 big blinds in the Sunday Million. Three players between you and a massive payday. I hope he enjoyed it. We'll see if he can get it home. Of course, lots of poker still to be played. Lazarom has defended here and uh, flopped the straight. This is an easy game right now if you're Lazarom, isn't it? Just call pre-flop or just do something pre-flop, but make sure you get to the flop because you will flop the nuts. No problem. It's going to be hard for him to get money out of Rocky Donkey, though. Check, check, it goes on the flop. And Rocky Donkey does pick up. A flush draw. Lazarom puts out a speculative bet, hoping for a little bit more, praying Rocky Donkey doesn't just fold. Always annoying, especially <laughs> four-handed in a massive tournament to flop a big hand and not get paid. You can't complain, though, can he? Not flush and not straight is a pretty good way to go when you're flopping on a final table. Rocky Donkey will make the call. And... Switcho changeo. Rocky Donkey runs out the winner here with the flush. Lazarum will bet his straight, which seems like a reasonable thing to do. And Rocky Donkey might have thought about raising, decided against it. Decided he couldn't get any value on that board and just makes the call and he'll take one down. Rocky Donkey now moves up to second. Lazarum licking his wounds from that last pot. Lazarum came into this final table as the shortest stack, so you know there's going to be some bumps in the road. His uh, his fortunes have definitely upturned. His expectation coming to this final table would have been about ten thousand dollars, a bit more than that actually. But ninth place was eight thousand nine hundred. Look at him now with his sixty four thousand locked up. GX ninety one keeping the pressure on as the chip leader. He'll know that Lazarum will know there's a short stack right next to him, so Lazarum can't really afford to go bust in this hand. And GX91 has the best hand if they stop dealing out cards right now. Lazarum with the two over cards and the nut flush draw, I think slightly ahead. GX91 will bet it. Lazarum will flat call. Pretty scary spot for Lazarom, isn't he? Doesn't actually have a hand, although obviously he's flopped a tremendous uh, tremendous flop for him. Doesn't actually have a hand. And like I said, Henke Bet is sitting there with under 3 million. And between fourth and third, there's about $30,000. <laughs> so getting this flush draw wrong is no fun. And what do you do if you're Lazarom? This is a classic ICM final table dilemma. He has to fold. Now, technically, GX91 had the best hand with the pair. But interesting spot there. I think if he'd rewound earlier in the tournament, Lazarum would have been putting the pressure on, on the flop. Everything changes when you start playing for super huge money, though, doesn't it? 
GX91 is going to put the pressure on again here in hand 78. Lazarom is going to call this time with the ace nine. Well, he has the best hand. Something like a 60 40 shot, but he, he is all in. Needs this ace nine to hold. I mean, he'll have known he's got the best hand with ace nine in the blinds there a ton of the time. It's still a brave call for all his money. Still with Henke Bet as a shorter stack. And the jack of hearts might mean that he's out. Lazarom needs a heart or an ace. He does pick up a heart. So what a massive sweat for Lazarom from Sweden. One card away from Oblivion. He actually doubles up and that puts him into second spot. Henke Bet has uh, hoped for a long time that he'd be able to ladder up with that short stack, but he's got the message he's not going to be able to do that. He's going to have to either double up or pick up the blinds here. Now, GX91 is going to call him a lot. He's definitely going to call him with two nines. Henke Bet a little bit unlucky to run into something that strong. Needs to find running diamonds or running sevens or a king or something else funky. <laughs> Needs a king on this river. It doesn't arrive for him. The nines hold and Hanky Bet 89 after rocking the short stack for an impressive while is out in fourth with three handed in the Sunday million. And that would precipitate a deal. GX91 has been chip leader all of the way. Lazarom and Rocky Donkey the other two and uh, a lot of money involved. Big swings as well. $93,000 for third, $178,000 for first. You can understand them chopping it up. Now, over the next few hands, we would get a new chip leader. Lazarom GX91 would switch places. And uh, Lazarom, after starting this final table at the shortest stack, is now your chip leader. First time GX91 has not been chip leader at the final table. We'll see how the deal affects things. They're still playing for a chunk of change and the Sunday Million title, of course. I'll confirm their payouts as we uh, bust them. I say we. They're going to do it to themselves. You watch. Not too much help on this flop. Lazarom has a gut shot. He's actually winning with Jack High. Rocky Donkey rocking the six high. But he has the power of position. And he's going to make a continuation bet. 900,000 and change. And Lazarom immediately says, yeah, and what? Four million's the number, my friend. And Rocky Donkey says, yeah, no, I don't think so. Thanks. Lazarom putting the pressure on. He's had to be patient with that short stack earlier in this final table. Not so much anymore. He's got a big chip stack and he's going to have fun with it. He certainly should. What a position to be in. He bets a million dollars on the button. Exactly a million dollars. Rocky Donkey will shove. Thought about it a little bit. He's got a nice stack to shove, although he is going to get cooled down a lot here. King two is enough, says Lazarom. In goes the money. 17 million in the middle. This would turn around this three-handed tournament. If the king high holds, though, we're going to play heads up poker. Rocky Donkey needing this queen 10 to improve, or he's done, and he does improve it. On the flop, pair of 10s for him. What a sight for an old donkey's eyes. Probably wouldn't be much of a sight for an old donkey's eyes when he just say, why are you holding a playing card in front of my face? Trying to pull this cart. It's bad enough as it is without you. Stupid playing cards. Rocky Donkey enjoyed it, though. He's back in this. Up to uh, 15 million as we watch hand 96. And what a sweet spot for Lazarom. Aces on the button. Three-handed in the million. <laughs> Just making the raise. And then going, please don't fold, please don't fold, please don't fold, please don't fold. Yes, they didn't fold. Rocky Donkey's going to flat call here. And GX91 will also join the action. So we've got an unlikely three-way post-flop scenario at the end of the million. And that is a dream flop for Lazarom. Looks like a good flop anyway for Aces, doesn't it? But the fact that Rocky Donkey's caught the 10 is uh, obviously an amazing spot for him. Not so good for Rocky Donkey. He will disenjoy this pair of 10s as much as he enjoyed the last pair of 10s. That's my fearless prediction. It's not a fearless prediction anymore, is it? It's a hot take. I've learned that from American sports television. My Rocky Donkey hot take. Probably not going to catch on. Lazarom bets his aces. Pretty sturdy bet. He will get two folds quite a lot of the time here, but uh, not so much this time. 
Okey donkey has one of those hands that he's going to continue with. And this is pretty nasty for Rocky Donkey. He'll do well to get out of this alive. He's on a great run, actually. Uh, the player from Germany had his best ever result last weekend. Won 14k for a $17 buy, and he's done much better here, but it may well be coming to an end for him unless he can get super lucky on this river. Huge pot. And it's going to go the way of Lazaron with the aces. A phenomenal spot for him on the button, three-handed. Rocky Donkey is out, but like I said, a huge achievement for him. He wins $117,000 in the million. Hi, I'm Team Poker Stars Pro, Jake Cody. You can take part in the Sunday Million for free. Just follow the instructions on screen and join in our weekly Sunday Million free roll. Yeah, you can have a shot at a free seat. It's easy to do because it's free. You just need the password, which is ship it holler. Ship it holler. It goes down on June the 4th, 3.35 Eastern Standard Time. Hope you enjoyed me doing my Jake Cody voice there. Been working on that for some years. I think I've nailed it. You can barely tell the difference. We're into heads up action at the final table. And Lazaron will raise it up here out of the big blind. Two million in the middle and a bit more. And <laughs> we'll go to the flop. Lazaron with a two to one more or less chip lead. And bang, GX91 flops huge. We have had some huge flopped hands at this final table. GX91 with the uh, flush and the raw flush draw and his opponent betting into him, which must be nice. Lazaron flopped a bit as well here. Second pair and a diamond to boot. And GX91 is not going to mess around here. I like the raise. Definitely try and get the money in. Also a lot of hands he could be raising with on this flop. Jack Spades doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Gives Lazaron a gut shot straight draw. We can see it would be no good, of course. GX91 bets. And I don't think Lazaron will be going anywhere with a pair and draws here. Yeah, he does call. So this is a big, big pot. 14 million in the middle. Ace of Clubs might not be the best card for GX91 to win any more money here. Like I was saying, it's the perfect card for GX91 to win money here. <laughs> Lazaron has turned his hand into a bluff. You've got to love the aggression, but he's going to hate the result. Little was he to know that GX91 has an unfoldable monster. And Lazaron, well, the idea was nice. The timing was off. And that switched the chip lead. We'll skip on a few hands where GX91 has extended that chip lead. And now picks up kings on the button and gets his aggressive opponent to shove again by limping. The old rope-a-dope on the button gets GX91 in pole position to win the Sunday Million. A huge favourite to take it down right here. Lazarom, the all-in player with King-6 versus Kings, needs a minor miracle. Does flop a 6, so one more 6 for the uber suck-out. If he doesn't hit it, GX91 will be your champion. Oh, wow. Six of diamonds on the river. Lazaron gets there with a really dirty river. My word. It's not easy to win the Sunday Million, is it? You've got to get through 6,000 players and then you've got to get Pocket Kings home against King 6. That's the really hard part. What a huge card for Lazaron. Well, a huge card for GX91 as well. Unreal stuff. Just three outs on the river. But we're playing again. And we're playing with very even chip stacks. So that's a fractional chip lead. Jake's 91 with that horrible feeling of having to win the tournament all over again. He's flopped a flush draw here, but it's gone check, check. The random number generators put two kings on the on the board just to remind Jake's 91. I, just, I don't want to see it. You, you salt in the wound. Lazarom, who looks a really aggressive, creative player, doesn't he? Raises that turn with uh, a complete air ball and then gets there on the river. Well, GX91 is not going to put too much more money on the pot if he didn't improve his hand, you'd suspect. But it will still probably increase his frustration. If he's not just a little bit tilty right now, then he's a better man than me or lady. Better person. I mean, that's not that hard. But in this specific instance, what I'm saying is I would be uh, 
consumed by a little bit of rage. <laughs> it's a tough game to play. He's got to keep it together, though. He's still got a ton of chips. That's the thing. Yes, it's all gone against him. And he nearly had this thing won. But he's still right in this. GX91 playing out of Malta. Coming off uh, a lifetime best win of 26,000 last week. So he knows how to close out a tournament. And he is staying aggressive here with the flush draw and straight draw on this flop. Lazrom has the same straight draw. And he'll call. We've got uh, just under 10 million in the middle. Ace of Clubs is a bit of a blank. Perfectly possible for either of them to have the nut flush draw, of course. And GX91 is not hanging around. He's going to put the money in. Closing down the action here with his king high. Actually kind of a semi-bluff with the best hand. He was winning with king high. Always wanted to know how many how many bets people think are bluffs or semi-bluffs are actually made with the, the currently winning hand. Reasonably high percentage, I think. GX91 sticking with his limp the button strategy, which is an interesting thing to do, heads up. You can see he's done it with pocket kings. He's also doing it with four high. Lazarum's uh, been pretty consistent in just seeing it as an invitation to attack. GX91 with the best hand with fours. Interesting dynamic between these two. Last one's just been pretty relentlessly aggressive, hasn't he? He's going to keep that going on this turn. And really does ask the question of GX91, OK, you're going to call this with a pair. Are you also going to call the river with one pair, especially if there's another over card? Well, that's actually a card that makes this decision a little bit easier. Lazarum will know the seven high he can't win, but he doesn't want to bluff that kind of nasty bluffing card. And GX91, after a solid call on the turn, will take this one down and grab the chip lead back. What a to and fro battle this one is turning out to be. It looked like it was all going to be over quickly. When Lazarum spiked that six, we were into a real dogfight. Raise on the button from the Swedish player Lazrom. I should point out, if I haven't, by the way, his best cash before today was about $12,000. So he's just going to do, I don't know, about 150k better than that. Pretty cool. And... Check, check, this one has gone on the flop. GX91 makes a flush. I would say it's hard to see how we'll win a big pot, but we've seen Lazarom is not afraid to make big bluffs, sometimes out of nowhere as well, so we're still not discounting this becoming a big pot. GX91 with a flush will try and get paid here. 1.2 is the bet. And Lazarom will just call with a pair of threes. Actually, a pretty thin call, wasn't it? Uh, weirdly. But not a massive pot. Five million in it. It levels us up in chip counts again. GX91, although they are pretty deep here for heads up at the end of a tournament, he's still limping the button. And Lazarom has been really consistent in raising. <laughs> just seemingly whatever he has. You limp, I raise. That's just the way it's going to go down does mean we constantly have this situation where Lazarum has the initiative on the flop, but GX91 has position. Lazarum not continuing his aggression on this board. And GX91 turning two pair. Neither player has a heart um, in their hand. Both lovely people off the felt. Lazarum has turned a straight draw here. GX91 will raise. Now, if Lazarum decides to get over-aggressive here, no, he doesn't. He does give it up. We've seen him make some pretty punchy moves, but on this occasion, he reads it right, gets out of trouble, and GX91 will get a semi-comfortable chip lead. About six million in front. Not huge, though, is it? Could all change very, very quickly. This is fun to watch because they are playing that little bit deeper stacked because action went quickly at the beginning of this final table. We're seeing a little bit more heads-up poker than we usually get to see. I hope you're enjoying it. And this dynamic, which is pretty rare for a heads-up match, is continuing. GX91 is going to limp whatever he has on the button. Lazarum, it looks like, is going to raise whatever he has in the big blind. 
This time it's 10 deuce. And once again, GX91 has a much stronger hand on the flop. Lateron will continue. Seems to be mixing up when he's continuing and when he's not. GX91 has the easy call. Lateron does have a gut shot here, of course. That looked a bit like it, but it's a queen he needs. He makes a small bet on the turn. GX91 with another easy call. Nothing else makes too much sense there. And what's the latter I'm going to do on this river? He gave up on a sort of blank bluffing card before, and he does give up again. So GX91 might feel he's getting on top of his opponent here in terms of figuring out his playing style, just calling him down, and then if he can value bet, he value bets. Doesn't get paid on this one, but... Momentum in one direction, heading GX91's way right now. Lazaron needs to stop the bleeding. Hand 142. And Lazaron picks up Ace Queen on the button. GX91 will call and we'll see a flop. And GX91 will hit it. Top pair for him. He goes ahead and checks it. Over to Sweden's Lazarom. It will fire away. And a quick call. So far, so standard. Ace on the turn is obviously a fantastic card for Lazarom. It's a great card because obviously it makes him the best hand, but also it's a card that he would bluff a lot. So GX91 is not going to give this very much credibility. And he will call, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a bet and call on the river as well. Nine of Diamonds probably is not going to change my previous assessment slash hot take. Hot turn take. My turn hot take. Maybe that'll catch on. I'll work on it. Lazarum goes for maximum value, and he doesn't get paid. So discipline lay down from GX91. I like Lazarum's big river bet. After you've been that bluffy... And that aggressive, you've got to try and get paid when you actually make a hand. And although it was a scary board and in a vacuum, a reasonably easy lay down, you could have understood GX91 calling there, given how aggro Lazarom has been. Interesting spot. The action has moved on. GX91 has the button. You'll never guess what's happened. You won't. You, you, you will guess. Limp raise and a call is how it's gone so far. Lazarom with not much. We'll fire this flop, and GX91 with king high, heads up on an ace high board. Very often has the best hand, and we'll call. Lazarum needs a four to make a straight. He also needs a five or a nine or a fold from his opponent. He's going to try for the latter, and he's going to get the lay down as well. we got to admire Lazarum's continued aggression, even though his opponent will absolutely know what he's doing. It's very, very hard to stop, especially heads up. In goes the money in hand 144 with pocket fours. And after a lot of post-flop pots, suddenly we got an all-in confrontation on Lazarum shoves and GX91 has a hand to call in with. We are racing for the Sunday Million title. Lazarum with a small chip lead holds through the flop. If he holds through the turn and river, we've got a champion. Nine of clubs changes nothing. Just an ace or a jack on the river. And the seven of hearts sends it to Lazarom from Sweden. Well, that almost rope a to me. We had so many post-flop pots and then suddenly Lazarom shoved and that turned him into a champion. My word, $151,210 after the three-way chop. What a huge return for him. Easily his biggest ever cash. He also wins the Sunday Million title. GX91, who came in as chip leader, finishes second with 135K and Rocky Donkey rounds out the podium and the six-figure payouts after the deal and a shout out to Lazarom's achievement going from shortest stacked to Sunday million winner at the final table that is hard to do hope you enjoyed this edition of the Sunday million I enjoyed bringing it to you there's another one coming away next week for everyone here at pokerstars.tv take big care